Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today we are talking about some of the pictures. We're going to take a look at some pictures, talk about them a little bit that I just shot in my workshop along with my co-conspirator here, Eric Meinling, uh, in Oaxaca. So we just got back from this incredible workshop in Oaxaca, Mexico, and uh, the whole experience was fabulous. We visited a bunch of different places, saw incredible things, and photographed all of it. So the whole, just to kind of give you a little premise of this workshop, this is not your traditional photography workshop where basically you would go and learn how to take pictures of X. This wasn't a street photography workshop. This wasn't a portrait workshop. This wasn't a food photography workshop. It was all of the above in combination with cultural tourism. So just a little bit more of the background here. Eric Meinling, who is, uh, he's an American. He lives half of his year here in Ashland, where I live, and the other half of his year down in Oaxaca, Mexico, has been running a tourism company down there for 25 years, I believe it is. And uh, from there, they've been doing all kinds of cultural tourism. And it's not about photography. This is what they do, their cultural tourism, learning about textiles, learning about pottery, learning about the people, and just all kinds of different tours. And at some point a couple of years ago, we were well, actually kind of the day we were introduced, we started talking about this and he had gotten very much into photography and has become a superb photographer in his own right since then. Um, we talked about how much fun it would be to combine powers here and do a cultural tourism slash photography workshop. So that's what we did. So we took people all over the place get, where they had access to things that normal tourists absolutely would not have. We were in people's homes. We were photographing food being made in you know, people's kitchens. We were photographing textiles being made in places that aren't normally open to the public and just all kinds of incredible, incredible things. So uh, that's the kind of background of what this workshop was all about. And I would like to show you some of the photos that we did there. Now, for those who are watching live, please, by all means, throw out the questions as comments live. I do I do have those up. I'm watching those here. So if you want to know anything about a specific photo, by all means, shout it out. It's There's a bit of a delay between the, the real time and the chat. So I may have to go back to a picture, but that's fine. Just throw out your comments and, and we can do that. We can bounce around the pictures. No problem here. So I'm going to start with a little bit of street photography images. Not that. That would not be street photography. A little bit of a street photography images and just kind of go through a little bit of the story of how the workshop went. And it started before anybody arrived. I was out wandering around shooting some night street photography. So this is just... Um, you know, just walking down the streets of Oaxaca, this is the Oaxacan city and, and things like the, the vendors, the food vendors, which are super, super popular, super common there. You'll see these all over. This guy's making the corn and they put, it's like mayonnaise and cheese and chili and lime and stuff on it. Delicious. So, you know, stuff like this. It's fun getting, shooting street photography in a place like this. There's so much to see. Food, and this is again, this is before the workshop even started, just a bit of food. And, and incidentally, I should point out, some of you may have seen some of these images already on Instagram. I, I have posted a few of these. And if you're not following me on Instagram, please do at photo Joseph, the same photo Joseph you see everywhere here on Instagram. And I posted a bunch of these out there already. So you might've seen some of these, but now you get to hear a little bit of the story behind them. So uh, let's see, just uh, food, you know, whatever. There's always food. So this is fun. So this is in a, in a mezcal bar. And we go into this tiny little bar and this guy's sitting there playing the music. And there's this beautiful woman with her short skirt and the legs sticking out there and saw both of those things from outside. And then we went in and grabbed a drink. And you know, I wanted to get some pictures of the guitar player. You know, it's always kind of fun to get a little bit of the live uh, local texture, if you will. And so the guy's playing and uh, I'm trying to position the camera because I want to get the legs in the shot. I want to have these legs, obviously see the guitarist. Uh, sometimes when I shoot, I'll cut people's faces out deliberately. And I was possibly going to do that with a guitarist. I think I shot somewhere I did and somewhere I didn't. And then the woman that's in the doorway walks up to the frame. And it's one of these just perfect moments. She's standing there kind of singing along. And it just couldn't have been a better setup, except for the tourist in the background who is in the way. But other than that, it couldn't have been a better setup. So that was, that was fun. That was, a, that was a fun thing. Uh, bartender at the Mescal Bar. Uh, th oh, this is here. This is me and Eric and Flip. Uh, turns out that a friend of ours from here in Ashland happened to be in Oaxaca at the same time. He planned this trip down there to study mezcal. <laughs> Pretty good gig, right? He's down there for three weeks to learn about mezcal. He, uh, his job is basically opening and setting up bars for restaurants and bars and so on. People hire him to kind of set things up. And so he's down there researching mezcal for one of his clients pretty good gig. So uh, we ran into him. We knew he was there. Well, before we got there, we got together with him and uh, did a little sampling. So fun stuff like that. Um, all right, let's go to, let's go to 
street photography with the students. So here, now we're getting into the actual wandering around with the students. And these are the kind of things that we see. This is early morning. And it's just, it's, you know, it's not, um, it's not the most exciting type of photography in the world when there's nobody out there, but it's fun to see the city in the early morning light before all the people get out there and just to see what you can experience. And of course, the lighting at this point is beautiful. This is when the good lighting is. You get that early morning low light coming through. Uh, just fun to see the city in this way. And the people are all going to come later, of course, and, and we will we do get to those. Um, a trash day. This is this is crazy. So there's you know here in the United States and I'm sure most of Europe as well. When it's trash day, the garbage truck comes along and they pick up the garbage. You brought it in a can, they pick it up, they dump it in. Here, the garbage truck comes through and they sound a horn or alarm or something. You go, oh, that's the garbage truck. And you got to go out there with your garbage and you load it into the garbage truck yourself. So people walking out with their big bags and just tossing them into uh, into the back of the garbage truck. Pretty, uh, pretty fun. They're pretty interesting. Okay, let's look at a couple of portraits next. So this is true street photography, but portrait style. So this is where I'm approaching someone saying, hey, can I take your picture as opposed to just trying to nonchalantly uh, get the photo. And this story here, this photo was was fun. So I bought a hat, needed a hat, left my hat at home, needed a well, key, hat to keep the sun off. So I'm going through the market and a friend's hat shop and you know, buy a hat. And, uh, and I walk away and as I walk away, I'm going, well, that was dumb. I should have gotten a picture of her. She was great. A great face. I want to get a picture of her. So I go back and I said, can I take your picture? And she says, no. <laughs> okay. And then she says, 50 pesos. I look at her and I go, and fortunately I speak Spanish, kind of. I look at her and I said, uh, I just bought a hat from you. And she goes, fine. So I take her, but she won't smile. Take a picture. She's grimacing at me, kind of grimacing, but there you go. There's the, uh, there's the best I could get of a smile out of her. Now the next portrait, a little bit nicer story here, she is selling bread. And I'm actually in a restaurant and she just walks into the restaurant and she's trying to sell bags of bread. And it's kind of funny because the street vendors just walk into the restaurants, the restaurants don't shoo them out. And you know, people are coming in selling flowers, selling trinkets, God knows what. And she's selling bread and I don't need any bread. It looks pretty good, but I figure, you know what, why not? Maybe I can buy the bread and, uh, and get a picture. So I ask her, I say, I'll buy your bread if I can take your picture. She thought that was hysterical. So fine, sure. So I, I buy the bread and take her picture. And I think that came out really nice. A story of getting turned down though. Um, and so obviously I don't have a photo because I got turned down. Uh, I saw this gentleman who just had, uh, he just had a great face and he has his hat on, this fantastic beard. Um, he looked more like he was out of Havana than he was out of Mexico. It just had this fantastic look. And I walk by and I see him, I gotta get a picture of this guy, but he's sitting there with a few of his friends and they're chatting, so I don't bother. So I walk around for a little bit and I come back and circle back and, and I see he's there now with just one person and they're just kind of sitting next to each other and they're not really engaged in dialogue. So I figure good, good approach. So, so I walk up to him and you know introduce myself and say, would you mind if I take your picture? And he laughs, he thinks this is so funny. He goes, he goes no, goes, okay. And then he says, why? Why do you want to take my picture? And I said, uh, cause you have a beautiful face. And he laughs his butt off and I <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, off I go. Ah, sometimes you can't, uh, sometimes you lose. Yeah, but you gotta try, right? Sometimes you gotta try. Totally different approaches to street photography. There's the street photography where you are just being totally incognito, capturing what's actually happening on the street. The moment you engage with someone, you have changed the scene and it is no longer traditional street photography. And I, I totally get that. And that's an awesome way to do it. And I do that as well. For portraits like this, where you're going to get up really tight and close to someone, obviously they're going to be aware you're taking their picture. And so this is more of a, of a request. Can I take your picture? So I can get that eye contact, get that direct portrait. Totally different things to do. Um, I, you'll see I have some street photos where there's just people and they don't know you're taking the picture and that's fine. But um, but this is a case where I like to ask and get that get that uh, implicit permission. All right, let's go back to a little bit more early morning street photography. So this is just one, this is the kind of the entryway to the street that eventually leads up to our hotel. So we came in and up through this archway quite a bit. Um, so just a pretty thing. And this is one of those where, I, and I don't have the, the lesser photo, if you will, but in talking to the students about how to frame this, so you don't have other stuff getting in the way. So, so can I, yeah, I can move the mouse here. So, um, you know, here we're obviously seeing buildings and if I step just to the right a tiny bit, you're gonna see a bunch of sky and it's, at this point, the sky is just washed out and nothing. And I think a car parked up here, totally modern car that really sets off the view. So it's one of these where a step to the left and maybe raising the camera up a tiny bit makes all the difference in the world and really makes for a much more, well, I think much more interesting shot. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, moving that camera just a tiny bit makes such a huge, huge difference in there. 
Uh, let's see, let's go to this one next. So this is, again, just walking through the streets. You can tell it's early morning. The sun is just peeking up over the horizon. The sun has hit this beautiful orange building, has not yet flooded the street that we're walking through. And this woman wearing this bright red sweater walks out with her broom and just starts sweeping the, sweeping the walkway. And she's out there for maybe 20 seconds. And I see her and grab the camera and fire off a few frames. That was the frame that worked. And it was one of these interesting student experiences where, or granted the group is spread out a little bit. There's people, and there were six of six students and then the two of us instructors, like eight of us walking. And they're um, spread out a little bit, but there were a couple of people around me. And it happened so fast that I just grabbed, grabbed the camera and shot it. I didn't have time to say, okay, everybody, no, please, please notice the woman that has stepped out. But it was, as soon as she disappeared, an, an interesting point to turn to the group and say, okay, who saw the woman in red? It's like the Matrix thing, right? Did you see the woman in red? Uh, and most of them hadn't seen her at all. One saw, but didn't, or maybe two saw, but didn't take a picture. And it's one of those, like if you're doing street photography, you know, you gotta be ready, you gotta be ready. The lens caps off, the camera's ready to go. You gotta be ready to pick it up and fire instantly. And, um, and that's what is, and that's kind of, you know, a big part of what we're trying to teach throughout the workshop when it comes to street photography. And this is like day one, so. All right, let's see. Um, let's skip ahead to, uh, I don't know, let's go here. So this is, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the church. Um, let's pull this up. Actually, I can, I can pull up my notes on here. I do believe, um, yeah, so the, all right, the caption on this one, morning police exercises at the Basilica de Nuestra Señora de la Soledad. And this is, crazy. So we go out to this big cathedral church early, early, early in the morning, and there's p police exercises. They're marching back and forth and just their morning exercises uh, going on there right in front of the, in front of the church. That was pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool in here. And then this, so here's another one of those moments. So we've got this sweeper, this guy sweeping the streets here, or sweeping the, the walkway of the leaves in front of the, um, in front of the basilica. And I see this guy, and this is uh, you see it, and you go, okay, this is a great shot, but I gotta, I gotta get over there because I want the basilica in the background, so I gotta get. So I go over there, don't you know, run, but I don't dawdle. I get over there, and I drop the camera and I fire off one shot, and he goes sweep, break time, and off he goes to take a break, and that's like a one shot, and it's not exactly what I wanted, but it's what I got, and it's uh, and I like it, I like the picture quite a bit. And, oops, wrong button. Let's go, uh, come back here. There we go. Um, I like the picture quite a bit. Now there's a lot going on in here in Lightroom. The the shadow contrast was so great that I really pulled up the shadows quite a bit and pushed the highlights down. The the highlights in where did my mouse go? The highlights over here on the building and up here really looked like it had blown it out. But you know, highlight recovery is shooting raw. You pull some of that detail back in. Also, I think it's worth noting I haven't talked about the treatment that I did to these photos yet. On the very first day or evening, whatever, I'm looking at some of my pictures and I'm playing in Lightroom and I'm looking for a a look, if you will, that I'm going to be consistent with throughout the trip because I want the photos to have a consistent look to them. And I've been playing with these presets from um, Visco, VSCO. They've got, you know, anybody on an iPhone probably knows the Visco app. It's a fantastic app, really, really cool. Look, and it's free, it's crazy. I guess you can buy filter packs for it as well. Um, but on Lightroom, they have some filter packs, preset packs that are really nice. I really, really like them. And uh, I only have one of their packs that's kind of a sample pack, but I just I go through there and I found a, a variety of looks that I really liked and I stuck with this one. And what this look does, we we'll go back to the image and look a bit more closely, it really cools down the shadows. You can see that the shadows are quite cool, quite blue, and then warms up the highlights a lot. And so you'll see that throughout. If we go back to this image here, if you look in the shadows, the highlights are already warm because it's it's uh, sunrise, so you got warm light. But look at the shadows, they're quite blue and cool. And let's see here, if I go to, um, well, even back to the portraits, if you look at these portraits, the shadows are cool and the highlights are warm. It's just an overall look that I really, really enjoyed. And so I started applying that to all of the images to get that kind of consistency throughout it there. So, so there's that. Uh, let's see here, here's another, another image with an in interesting story behind it of how it was shot. So this is in, um, in the city of Yanwitlan. This is the temple and former convent of Santo Domingo in Yanwitlan. And so this is kind of rural. We're out, we're, we're out a couple hours out of the city, out of um, Oaxaca. And it's huge, and there's the whole story behind this. You look up the history of Yanwitlan, it's fascinating. The city now has a population of 700 people. It used to be 40,000 people. And then as Eric will say, um, the Spanish came through and somebody sneezed. 
and that was it. Just the disease spread rampantly, decimated the population, and the, and the town, the city, never fully recovered. But you've got this huge, huge church there in a town of 700. I think every single person in the town could probably fit in this church at once. It's, it's incredible. Anyway, so going back to the photo itself. So uh, you can see here that I'm low, right? I'm, I'm down low on the ground, and there's these huge steps leading up to this enormous cathedral, enormous church. But the camera angle, the camera position looks as if I'm standing on a ladder going straight in. Now, this is not a shot that you can just get by picking up your camera and firing it. There's a lot more has to go into it, unless you're going to get up on that big ladder and, and shoot with a you know, really wide field of view with perspective correction and so on. So this is a fun capability of what you can do with a camera and with Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever. Um, in this case, it's four or five shots, shot landscape, but straight up vertical, boom, 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 like a panoramic basically, but shooting panoramic vertical. So I shoot there, so I get this really high resolution. In fact, let me see here um, if I can tell what the final resolution of this file is. Um, shouldn't that be here somewhere? One of these days I'll actually figure out Lightroom. I don't know, I don't even know where you say. Anyway, it's big, whatever. It's, uh, it's four files, so this is probably you know, 60, 80 megapixels, something like that at this point. Um, so that gives me the file, the, the image, the, the complete church in it, but the perspective is all wonky. So then perspective correction in Lightroom or in Photoshop. And some of it comes in in the stitching process. You choose a, um, a method of stitching. There's the spherical and I forget what the other ones are called, but anyway, there's a method of doing that. So you choose the right one that looks right or gets the closest to right. And then just using the perspective correction tools inside of Lightroom to straighten it out. And so you end up with a photo that looks, frankly, like you're standing on a big, huge ladder shooting straight into it. And I suppose if you look really close, you'd, you know, you'd realize, well, hold on, if you're actually on a ladder looking straight in, you'd see the bottom of the door and so on. But you get the image and it has this big, huge straight on look to it, which I think it's really, really cool. All right, anyway, so moving on. Um, Food, love the food, right? So we had these incredible meals. This is one of these things where if you're gonna if you're gonna come on this tour, man, the only the only way that you're gonna get some of these meals is to be on a tour like this with us because we are eating in people's homes. Um, in this case, we're eating in a we are in somebody's home. We're in their backyard. They set up this nice restaurant-like area for us. And apparently this family used to have a restaurant. They used to run a restaurant in Yan Lan, and for whatever reason, they closed the restaurant down. But then now they do private private events like this. Eric calls them up and says, hey, you know, could you guys cook for us? And we have this incredible meal. So in this picture, what you're seeing here is the making of a quesadilla, basically. It's this huge tortilla. And Yan Lan, you know, anybody who's familiar with Mexican food knows that most Mexican food tortilla, most Mexican tortillas are made with corn. But in Yan Lan, they make them with wheat. So it's a it's actually quite different for the Aryans. We have this huge tortilla and she's got this um, Mexican uh, casillo in it, this kind of uh, string cheese type cheese. And she's just straight over the coals, directly on the coals, flipping this thing over with her bare hands, melting the cheese. Love it. Just love it. Okay. Uh, the church again, I know this is going to be hard to see coming through the um, coming through the live stream here possibly, but it's quite dark image. But uh, this is the streets up to the church at night. Just a fun, different approach to that. Uh, sunrise in, uh, in the following morning in Yan Huit Lan. We didn't have amazing sunrises. And in fact, this is actually worth mentioning. So we are going to do this tour again. Clearly, this was very successful. This is something we're going to absolutely do again. Um, we're going to change the time of year. We're going to do it in October this year. I forget the dates that we've chosen. Um, it's all going to go up on the website really soon. But we're going to do it in October uh, in the hopes that we'll get better skies. Uh, that's kind of the end of the season where we're going to get some storms and clouds and so on. So we might get a little rain, but of course, rain means clouds and clouds mean better skies, assuming we're not rained out. So hopefully we've picked the right time. It's, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a, a crapshoot. And with that said, actually, let me just throw this up real quick. If you're interested in these workshops, go to photojoseph.com slash workshops. And there is a, uh, right now, there's a thing that says, hey, the workshop's done. We're firing up a new one in October. And the mailing list is there for you to sign up for. You want to sign up for the mailing list if you're interested at all in these, because then we will notice you, um, you know, well in advance, obviously, when the tickets are available, once all the details are there. And if you're on the mailing list, that's where the, the first announcement will be. So if you wait to find out about it on Twitter or just happen to run across it by then, yeah, it might be sold out. So sign up for the mailing list. So if you're interested, do that. It doesn't mean you have to go. Just at least you get to find out about it. All right. Uh, let's see, man, we are taking a way long time here. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's do a couple more. Let's do this portrait. Just another. This is the family that we're photographing, uh, sorry, that was cooking for us. This lovely little girl, just so adorable. A uh, little shy, she had silver teeth and she didn't want to show them off, so she's hiding there. 
uh, some more scenics, you know, more sunrise stuff. We saw uh, ruins. This is in the town of Mitla. This is a Zapotec archaeological site, one of the second most important ones in the state. We went up to this place called uh, Yerve al Agua, and this is this incredible mineral deposit. So here's kind of results of the mineral deposit. You walk over this. It's, it seems crazy that you shouldn't be able to walk on these things, but you can. And they've uh, built this this pool that collects the water, and you get these incredible reflection pools, infinity collect, uh, reflection pools, and just turns into some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scenery. So again, very early in the morning for that. This is uh, that same area, Yarve del Agua, and this is just we're walking back up to back up to the village, and um, you know you get this just incredible misty mountains range here, and that's sunrise. That's the sun just pointing straight into the camera there. Good fun there. So here's an example of some of the. This is actually an impromptu portraiture um, uh, uh, additional light. What do you call it? Um, added light, strobe light setup. So we're, we go into this place to have breakfast, and it's, it's a restaurant called <laughs> Alice's Kitchen. And Alice, that's Alicia is her, her name, and that, that's her there. Here you go. That's, that's Alice right there making fresh, fresh tortillas for us. Uh, in fact, it's so fresh that they're actually making their own masa. So this is the corn being ground up into masa that then gets made into their tortillas. So this photo, we're shooting her. She's got this outdoor, great smoky kitchen. And there's this little slit of a window where the sunlight's coming through. And it's one of these scenes where the potential of insane, awesome beauty is there, but it's just not happening. We need more light coming through. And so Eric goes, we got the strobes, let's use them. You know, it's, it's one of my favorite expressions. People say, I only shoot with available light. But I only shoot with available light too. If I've got a strobe available, I'm using it. There we go. So Eric sets up a couple of strobes on a light stand, blasting through this little window. And so now it's illuminating the smoke. You get this really cool view. But, you know, she's working. She's not posing for photos. She's making breakfast. She's bouncing around all over the place. And we're trading off with the remote triggers so that everybody can get a chance to fire off a few shots and see what it's like. And uh, that's the that's the shot that I got. I just I love this. I got really lucky with the flames coming up. She kept looking through the window. She thought it was absolutely hysterical that Eric's setting up his light shining through. So she keeps looking at him. And you're going, no, just don't look at him. And uh, anyway, got, got this one. It was uh, getting in the right place at the right time. Really, really fun there. All right, a couple more portraits, then we're going to nail this, uh, wrap this thing up. So let's see here. This chap, so we went to a place, and this is something we'll do on the next tour as well. We went to a place where they make mezcal. It's a mezcal still. And this is the guy that runs the place. And fortunately, I'll ask him, will you pose for a picture? And he does, but he doesn't want to look at the camera. And he's one of the, he just thinks it's hysterical. But then I get a couple of the workers to pose. Oh, man, this is... This is my favorite portrait, maybe my favorite photo from the whole trip. I just I love this shot. I love the look in the guy's eyes. Just looks fantastic. And then you get this guy. What a face. And this guy's he's tiny. It's funny. He's like four feet tall, four and a half feet tall. Little, little tiny guy. Um, but super strong. Here they are. So they're piling, they are piling up the the piña. So this is the um, agave plant. Um, the piña, the, the base part of it, cut up into quarters, and they're tossing it onto this bed of coals. And so the whole process of mezcal, you, know, you got to go there and you see the whole thing. But basically, they got these, uh, these big piñas. They're cut up into pieces, and they go onto this big, huge coal pit and then covered with blankets and dirt and piled on there. And they sit there and smolder for nine days, and then they pull it out, and they go through the rest of the process. But we were there to see that and all the crazy smoke. It just made for some really, really cool shots. Anyway, so that, that's a few of the shots that I wanted to show you. That's the... That's the wrap up of, uh, of what we were doing on that. Um, really a great trip, great experience. If you want to do something like this, you want to see this, experience it, photograph this, then come on, man. Just come on to Mexico with us. Sign up for the mailing list. You'll, you'll, um, uh, you'll get a, a notified as soon as the thing goes live, as soon as we have everything lined up and ready to start selling tickets for that one. But it's, uh, it was a really, really good experience. A lot of fun, great photography, and... Uh, I think everybody had had a good time on it. So, there we go. That's it. I didn't see any questions come up about the photos. So we'll unless my unless I've got the wrong chat thing coming up, in which case I'll see them later. And I guess that's all I'm going to say right now. So here, let me just throw this thing up here once again. If you want to learn more about it, head over to photojoseph.com/workshops. That will take you to the place to sign up for the newsletter and learn more about it. And with that, folks, we're going to call it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.